Hello and welcome to Be a Tier, the German Engineer. Today we are back with episode 32 of season 2 of our newest Let's Play series, and this is, of course, Oxygen Not Included. Yes, we are finally back, and this is a special episode because this is the 200th video on my channel. Isn't that something? But we have a lot to do, so let's just jump right into it. All the way here on the top. The second rocket right here. Let's take a quick look on the interior, and we have 200,000 calories in it. Oh my god. Okay, that is a lot more than I expected, but we're gonna send this thing here very quickly to space, so we can actually get a few more databanks in. So we're gonna go to the Spacefarer module, we're gonna change the crew, and we're gonna see where is old Chemster at. Of course, he is already the pilot, and all we're going to do is we're gonna go to orbit. And then we can begin the launch sequence, Chemster should come by, Hop in, go to space and create databanks. That's all we need him to do for right now, before we actually send him to another planetoid. Meanwhile, over here on Ugista, we have our rover. Yes, our rover is here and he still has 166.9 kilojoules out of 180. So we have wasted quite a bit, but that is okay for right now. So we are going to get start digging because I want to dig out as much of this area here as I can, because here is where Chemster is going to live or whatever other dupe we're gonna have here later. For right now, this area here is perfect. But for that, we need to dig down, and that is exactly what our rover here is going to do. Yes, let's get started, and we will check back in in a little bit to see what we have accomplished. Meanwhile, on Abundino, our interplanetary launcher system is looking amazing. As always, let's take a quick look. Our interplanetary launcher, 200 out of 200 red bulls, that's perfect. And our red bull chamber is also at 1,000 out of 1,000. All right. So I would say let's use it. Down here we have our conveyor loader and our conveyor loader we're going to select and we're going to say let's see here refined metals and we're going to use cobalt. Because we have a cobalt volcano on this planetoid it is right here and it is erupting as we speak putting out more and more cobalt so we should have more than enough of that stuff laying around and we're going to send it straight over to Ugista so we can use it when we need it. That is the first thing we're going to actually send. And later on, we also have to send some sand and some other stuff. But for right now, I'm pretty happy with cobalt alone. And here we can see the first cobalt is arriving and we are already firing. And the red bolts are coming in exactly as that should work. It literally couldn't be much better than that. And that is absolutely perfect. Tiny little bit is lost as usual, but that is okay. And certainly not the end of the world, especially when we speed it up just a notch. And this thing here will fire even more. Yes, we're going to send a lot of cobalt over there. We certainly can't have enough. That is certainly not going to hurt. So, yeah, how much more are we putting in there? I think, yeah, that should be more than sufficient as soon as it's empty. A low manual use, going to turn that off. And now we are good. All of that stuff can go straight over to Ugista, and it will be very helpful in the long run. Speaking of Ugista, how is our little rover friend here doing? Let's take a look. Yes, I built two storage bins up here that are exclusively for slime, so we can get rid of the slime lung right away. And it looks like the ladder to the bottom is built. All the way down here where the abyssalite starts, that is perfect. So, let's take a quick look in our charm overlay here. Yes, I want to dig all of this stuff here out. When we are done here, before a dupe ever sets foot on here, all of the slime here will be gone. That is the job of our rover. So, let's see. We are probably going to dig, first of all, into here. Yeah, four high. Let's get rid of all of this stuff right here. When that is gone, we're going to come over here, dig all of this here out, all the way down on the left side. And then we're going to do the exact same thing right here on the right side, all the way down, slowly but steadily. And I don't think that this one rover here has enough power to get all of this here done, especially since I want to build some infrastructure. So let's take a look at our star map and our rocket. We'll be back in 1.5 cycles. We're going to immediately refill it with another rover and send it back to Ugista. As a tiny little bit of a side project over here on Abundino, yes, the dupes have nothing to do anymore. We are going to come down here once again. We know it, it is extremely cold at a negative 100 C, but right here, what was that? I can't remember. Let's take a quick peek. It was an iron volcano. Yeah, we are certainly not going to leave that thing here alone. But for that, we will need a tiny little bit of infrastructure right here. So let's go into stations and let's take a look down here at the bottom. This time we are going with atmosphere because we have barely any radiation down there. So what are we going to do here? Here we have our atmosphere docks and I'm probably just going to plop them right around here. Yeah, that should do. Let's put in our standard six as usual. And then, of course, also an atmosphere checkpoint right beside it. 
For that, we will need a floor, which is going to make it out of insulated tiles. And then we're going to grab us a ladder, come with the ladder down. And then once again, insulated tiles, we are going to come back over too high so the dupes can actually walk through here. We're going to dig all of this stuff here out, of course. And you know what? For a good measure, let's throw in a fire pole for the dupes as well. And that should get the job done. As soon as all this here is built, we're going to tear out the ladder right here so the dupes can't jump the gap anymore. And they're forced to go along here and all the way down. Yes, that should get the job done. But of course, you know what? We don't have a fire pole here, do we? At least down here on the bottom, we should most definitely have one. So starting right here, we're going to come all the way down. Yep, just as far as our ladder goes. So dupes, let's start building. Let's get it done. Meanwhile, over here on Ingenium, yes, our newest aluminum volcano right here is dormant and we can see it is still dormant for 40.5 cycles. But that is not why we are here. We are here because I made a mistake. And yes, you can see it right here. We have oxygen in there, even though I vacuumed it out. And the reason for it is that a liquid lock was built right here when we put in the water. That is, of course, a problem. And truth be told, I am not the one who discovered it. That honor goes to Dull Crystal. He paid insane attention to the video. And that is, of course, highly appreciated. Thank you very much. And now you definitely know I 100% read every one of your comments. So let's take a look. What can we do here to fix this in ventilation? We're going to grab our pump once again. And once again, we plop in some pipes right here, just something like this here. And then a high pressure gas vent on top of it and connect it all to power for good measure. There we go. And very, very soon we will have a vacuum in here. And then we can tear this here back out, close it off. And then it will really be done for good this time. Another thing that I want to address on Ingenium is this system right here. Yes, that is certainly a problem. Let's take a quick look at it, why that is. In our refrigerator, we can see right here that we have a change of 0.9 per cycle. That is, of course, not a hell of a lot, but it's also still not optimal. So what can we do about it? The problem is this door here, it prevents the gases from go through, but unfortunately not 100%. So even if we pump more carbon dioxide in here, it will just disappear. Therefore, we need to go lower. And that is precisely what we are going to do, of course. So let's see here from right here. I'm just going to go two down. That should be more than sufficient space. Or are you guys three high? Nope, you are too high. Perfect. OK, just double checking and making sure. Don't want to make another mistake, at least not today. So right here, we're just going to put in a, a brand new floor and then fridges all over the place. Oh my God, the game did not like that, but that is okay. We're just going to put them in slowly one by one and that will be perfectly fine. So we're going to put all of these here in, then we're going to deconstruct all of these here, tear out the floor and then right here, we have plenty of carbon dioxide to go around. We just got to grab it and pump it into this room. It is a little bit warm, so uh, for a few minutes here, it should be a little bit of a problem. But it should solve itself very quickly, especially when I turn off this liquid pipe right here. And what do I mean with turn off? Well, simple enough. We are going to use our snipping tool and we're just going to snip it off. I don't care right around here. So now all this water here will be used up. And when that is empty, nothing new will fill up. And this gives, of course, our anti-entropy thermal nullifier a 100% efficiency rating because we are not wasting its energy in trying to cool down this water right here. On the very top right here, yes, our autonomous rocket is back and our rover here has not been built in, but that is OK, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another rover module. And the reason for it is that I can. So I will. <laughs> it's literally this simple. We're going to plop in another one and of course, a couple ladders so the dupes can reach it. But other than that, it's going to be the exact same thing, just that we are going to send two rovers over to Gista at once. That will definitely be able to complete it in one go around and should not delay us any further. And Krivak just built the last rover module. Therefore, our rocket is now ready once again. So let's send it off real quick. We're going to change the crew and it doesn't really matter. Luma, of course, let's go. We're going to change the destination. We are going to orbit when we are going to begin the launch sequence. So let's turn up the speed and let's wait until Luma shows up. And there he is. And we should have lift off here any second. Yes, sure enough. And once again, works like a charm. Now with two brand new rover modules. And let's go to the star map right away because our rocket is already there. Let's give it just a second. And there we have it. First of all, we're going to select the duplicant Luma, deploy him back on the planet's surface and play the game. And he is gone. We can see it right here. Now we're going to change the destination and back over here to Ugisa. 
just as simple as that. And then another 2.4 cycles, our rocket will arrive and we'll drop off two brand new rovers. Right here on Ingenium, now that everything is finally and completely done, we can select unbreathable gases, carbon dioxide, and let's go. And now we are pumping wonderful, wonderful carbon dioxide into this area right here. And we just gonna fill up this entire bottom right here. And then down here, all of this here is going to change very, very quickly. Yes, at the moment it says refrigerated and contaminated air and whatnot. But we're going to ignore all of that because all of those problems are going to solve themselves here very, very shortly. So we will check back in when that has finally happened. And now it is done and you can maybe see it. I added one more addition and this is the thermal sensor right here. Yes, because I set this here up, send a green signal if above negative 40 degrees. And it is connected to a gas shutoff right here. And we can see it right here. Yes, we can control if we are pumping more hydrogen in here or not. Because I don't want it so cold in here that all this carbon dioxide in here is going to freeze. And when we take a look at the carbon dioxide itself, in properties, we can see it has a condensation point of negative 48.1 degrees. And then when we go to the liquid carbon dioxide, we can see that it has a freeze point of negative 56.5. Right at the moment, that's perfectly fine. We are just liquefying it up here on the top. And as soon as it hits the bottom tiles right here, it will immediately become a gas again. But if we let the temperature drop even further, it will freeze. And this here is absolutely for nothing. And that is why we need a tiny little bit of automation. And right now, just checking back on Ugista, our little rover here has died. That is sad, but not a problem. Because, of course, in orbit, let's take a look into our star map. Yes, right here, we have two more rovers ready to go. So let's bring down the first one. And then let's bring down the second one. And then let's go back through the planet's surface and they should be coming down here side by side together with another one of our wonderful interplanetary payloads yep there's a hell of a lot more of those coming for sure and our two rovers right here are immediately hard at work in getting done what our first rover couldn't do but with these two right here we can definitely decimate all of this here without a problem you can see it with the first one i even started to build a tiny little home for champster right here so that is definitely looking very very good we need to add on a little bit here and of course dig a hell of a lot more but again the rovers will get it done and of course back on abundino this year has been completed for a while now i just kind of forgot about it <laughs> yeah that happens but here we are so let's hop back down here and let's grab us a blueprint and of course our nifty blueprint is coming in handy once again ah there is a little problem we cannot go through the bottom but that is okay we need to just go over the top so let's plop in a ladder right here. We don't want to go into this carbon dioxide geyser right here. That is absolutely not necessary. You know what? It is dormant right now. So let's take care of this sucker here for good. Um, Let's see. We can go just... Can I build here? Yeah, that should do. Uh, let's just box it in and call it a day. That should get the job done. And it shouldn't cause any more trouble. You know what? Let's come all the way up here. Dig over to there so we can actually reach all of this stuff right here. No problem at all. And also all the bees are undisturbed. We will probably use those later. But for right now, they don't really serve a purpose as of at this moment. All this here needs to be dug out, of course. Here we need to dig over. And here we need to dig down. And of course, digging commands all throughout the entire thing here. Except, of course, right here we need to be careful. We come two tiles over and two tiles up. This one here, we cannot build. This tile here is crucial because if we dig this one here up, it will erupt immediately if it is not dormant. And that is certainly something we don't want to happen. And apparently we are a little bit low on steel, so I will transfer some more steel over from Ingenium as well. Oh, look at this here. It is cycle 611 and our steam vent here went dormant. So now we have the aluminum volcano and the steam vent dormant. All we have to do over here is tear out this one wire and close it off. But now what we can do is, yes, this pipe right here, we're going to connect it up. And we are going to snip it off. And then all the way over here. Yes, right there. Uh, this is where we need to go. And we can just plop in a liquid bridge. Literally right there. And connect this here up. And at that point forward. Also snip this here off. Can't forget it. We are transferring more polluted water along this line. All the way through to our aluminum volcano tamer. Yep, that is how we're going to fill up this loop here. That is going to be good. And I can't wait for that to happen. Finally, we're getting somewhere down here, and that should complete the system here once and for all. 
Meanwhile, over here on Ugista, yeah, look at this beauty. Two rowers, yeah, that is insanity. These guys are fast. They have built an entire home over here for our gemster. And of course, dug out everything and we have our nice water area down here on the bottom. Of course, we cannot dig up Abyssalite, that is a problem, but that is totally fine. Whenever Chemster comes over here, he can do it himself. And then over here, we can't forget we have our natural gas geyser, which will provide us with wonderful power. And then down here, we have a Paku, which will probably be a nice food source for us. So we are looking pretty decent around here, and we are definitely going to make progress. But Chemster, well, speaking of him, he is still over here. And let's take a look here. Let's pause the game because otherwise he's jumping in front of it. We have 100, 200, 342 data banks. Yeah, that is looking pretty decent. And I would say that is more than enough for right now. So I'm going to grab him and I'm going to send him back home. Yes, that's what we're going to do. We're going to change the destination and you are allowed to go back home, Chester. So let's watch him come in on Ingenium uh, all the way on the top, of course. He should be here any second. Let's turn the speed up. And there he comes. Our research rocket is back on the ground. And of course, that also means when we take a look into our research tree, the Rat Bolt engine is coming closer. We are only needing 45 more points in our data analysis research. And after that, we are going to go straight. Yes, we are going to go straight over here for our hydrogen rocket and probably our diamond press and all the way down here on the bottom. Yeah, actually, I do also want to get all this stuff here as well for automation. Definitely will come in handy later, especially the memory toggle is going to be very helpful in the long run. So, Jamster, you did a great job as usual, but you're about to leave once again. And now in cycle 612, yes, it has taken us that long, but here we are. It is finally time. We are going to select the spacefarer module, not on our autonomous rocket, but on our colonization rocket. And we are going to select Chemster. We're going to change the destination and we're going to go straight into orbit right over here. That should be okay. And then we are going to begin the launch sequence. Let's take a quick look. 218,000 calories. Yeah, I believe that should be sufficient for right now. Chemster should definitely make it all the way over there without a problem. Therefore, we're going to plop him in here and we wait for him to come and to take off. And there comes Chemster and he is hopping into his rocket. Let's take a quick look into the interior. He's taking off his suit and he's, of course, not putting it in here. Come on, Chamster, my man. Let's get it done here. Yep, that is a hell of a lot better. And now we should have liftoff. Yes, we sure as hell do. And Chamster, come on. The rocket is going to start very, very slowly. It is one heavy rocket, but we are definitely going to make it to space without an issue whatsoever. Yeah, gotta love it. Love to see it every single time. Not gonna lie about it. And it certainly doesn't get old. And sure enough, here is our rocket, and we can see in 1.7 cycles, we make it to Ugista. Let's take another quick look at our planetoid right here. And yeah, our rovers are slightly bored. They're still taking all of that algae away. Not algae, slime, of course. And yeah, we can see it. We have nothing in the air, so we are perfectly fine over here. And all of this stuff here gets automatically decontaminated when we take a look into our germs overlay, exposed to 218 rats. And... Yes, we are definitely getting less and less slowly, but steadily. That is going to be very helpful, especially since we're in the vacuum of space. So there's also no oxygen or any other gas around. And here we have Chemster in this rocket. We can see he is 0.6 cycles away before he reaches Ugista. And there we have it. He is already moving another tile over. But yes, we are not going to land Chemster on Ugista today, at least not in this episode because the next episode will be mainly dedicated to Chemster and Ugista with a couple of side projects as usual. But other than that, there's a hell of a lot to do on Ugista as usual, and Chemster is more than up for the task. So I'm really looking forward to that. But that is all I have for you today. So if you enjoy my content, please subscribe to the channel, leave a like on the video, and of course, comment down below. You know it, I'm always happy to hear from you. And once again, thank you very much to Dull Crystal for spotting my mistake with our wonderful aluminum volcano right here, where I forgot some oxygen in the chamber. That would have certainly caused some trouble. And with that, I say thank you and peace.